amazing. Thank you for sharing your observations from World Championship 2020, Sherwood. Let us have one minute for reconciling our feedback to Sherwood. Okay, cool. Our next speaker, DTM Howard Hinman. Apologies if I pronounce it wrongly, Howard. He is a senior paralegal and a co-trustee in Charles Arthur Enterprises Trust. His presentation title today is Brilliant Light Power. This pathway project is deliver a speech, receive a feedback and then deliver another or the same speech with incorporating that feedback. Let us welcome TTM Howard, Brilliant Light Power. Brilliant Light Power, TTM Howard. Breakthrough energy is a long time passion of mine. You could say I have a predilection for this field. Presiding officer, ladies and gentlemen, I've been studying this field since about 2012. I started by studying for an hour after supper each Tuesday and Thursday evening. Eventually, I found a website called e-catworld. That's e-catworld, e-catworld.com. It covers all the containers in the field of what is called LENR, low energy nuclear reaction, or CMNS, condensed metal nuclear science. LENR is used in the United States, Western Europe, and CMNS is used in Asia, Russia, and Eastern Europe. I've spoken to this club about Brion Energy of Berkeley, California in previous talks when I lived in Southern California. There were four developments the weekend of August the 15th, 2020. And I will drill, I will describe three briefly and I'll take one all the way using three threads all the way to your next automobile or possibly the one after that. Here are the four developments. Number one, Andrea Rossi announced his ECLAT SKL is ready for third party testing. Since I've given this talk, he's announced he will be tested by two different groups. One, a partner, a business partner, probably ABB of Sweden, and a second, some kind of a certification group, possibly under, underwriters laboratories. Second development, Takahiso Mizuno up on the Japanese island of Hokkaido. He's a CMNS specialist. He is getting, with his condensed matter nuclear science, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. Useful, however, you require four to six to times over unity to be commercially useful. Or the third, NASA, which had announced some months ago, Lattice Nuclear Fusion, unannounced it, reannounced it again this weekend. I have no idea what's going on with that one. NASA has a predilection for causing confusion. And the fourth that I'll drill down all the way to your next automobile, brilliant light power. The idea is the hydrino, and my first thread is the hydrino. Hydrino comes from the term, means little hydrogen. The key person in this company is called Dr. Randall Mills. Randy has an MD from Harvard about 1986, and he has an undergraduate degree in engineering from William and Mary. When I first saw this company about 2014, I actually called the company up and said, yes, you're real. I looked at the website, yes. And I actually talked to Randy's assistant. I think she's since left the firm. However, recently, in recent years, I've actually corresponded with him. I call him Randy, he calls me Howard, and every time they have some significant event, I email congratulations, he comes back with thank you. For those who want the theory, this talk will be light on theory, I'm gonna tell you where to get the theory. Randy Mills has a book, and what it is, briefly, is here's the overarching theory. Again, there exists this little hydrogen, and through a chemical reaction, what you have is these, what he calls hydrinos. Essentially, dark matter is composed of hydrinos. That's the theory. 
and you can go to a lower ground state of the, hy hy the hydrogen atom and produce energy. The book is essentially 19th century classical physics brought forward in the 21st century. In other words, there's no Werner Heisenberg's an uncertainty principle, and there's no Aaron Schrodinger and his cat. It does not exist as a useful model in this item. If you will, Randy Mills is both the Michael Faraday of his field, in other words, the great English experimentalist, pioneer of electromagnetism, and James Clark Maxwell, the man who laid down Maxwell's equations, a Scotsman between about 1865 and 1871. For those who are not familiar, Maxwell's equations are cover radio, electromagnetic propagation, in other words, radio, television, cell phones. Those are all covered by James Clark's Maxwell's equations. It might be a possibility that Randy Mills is a modern-day Nikola Tesla. Certainly, if he's not a modern-day Nikola Tesla, he's a modern-day Thomas Edison or Edison's associate, Charles Proteus Steinmetz. Here is what was accomplished and has been further amplified the weekend of August the 15th. Ten times over unity from a chemical reaction. The only way you get over unity is either a nuclear reaction, which can be controlled with proper engineering, or a thermonuclear reaction, which is currently uncontrolled. It's called a hydrogen bomb. Very powerful and very destructive. More importantly for your next automobile, they're getting 1,000 degrees centigrade, in other words, superheated steam. This would allow the use of a Brayton cycle turbine. This type of turbine was used in at least one of the Selden patent Air cars about 1905. For those unfamiliar, this is, I could give a whole talk about this. George B. Selden was involved in a major patent fight with the current Ford Motor Company led by Henry Ford I, and Henry won that at appeal about 1911. That deserves a whole talk in itself, all the patent wars of the late 19th century. That's the end of the first thread. The second thread is the modern use of steam. The Brighton Cycle Turbine is one of many types of turbines. The pinnacle of the steam car was the Doble Brothers, primary Admiral Doble, about 1925. There were about 60 cars made between 1918 and the early 1930s. Admiral Doble even made a steam powered aircraft about 1935 in Oakland, California. The key thing about the Doble cars is they have superheated steam and they have an electric starter. This is not a Stanley steamer. Howard Hughes owned number 20, a Roadster. It's currently in the possession and the collection of Jay Leno. It has the torque of a modern turbo diesel, a thousand pound feet of torque, and like electric cars, steam cars have lots of torque and both are quiet. They have a direct drive, no transmission, with mid-1920s technology, and with no aerodynamics or streamlining, this car, and you can see the YouTube videos, will get zero to 75 in about 10 seconds. Jay Leno has a steam car wing in his vehicle collection, including a Stanley steamer. That's the end of the second thread. The third thread, you say 75 isn't fast enough, you wanna go faster. How about high speed steam cars? In the late 1960s or 1970s, there was a burgeoning environmental movement. The question was, will there be ICE, internal combustion engine transportation? GM actually made a steam car about 1969 using the Doble Brother patents. And somebody one-upped them. William Bill Lear of the Learjet made an Indianapolis 500 racer. It is actually in a museum in the Chicago, Illinois area. The series is called Car. It's now called IndyCar, and it's owned by Roger Penske. There's a whole series. There's road races in Long Beach, Surfer's Paradise in Queensland, Australia, etc. The point is, you have a steam car that do 200 miles an hour and do it for over 500 miles with minimal water and, and fuel use. If you put all three threads together, the overunity hydrogen over Andy Mills with a superheated steam, the patents of the Doble brothers, primarily Andrew Doble, and it, the use, that use superheated steam, and the steam race car of Bill Lear that uses superheated steam, your next car, or the one after that, maybe ladies and gentlemen, presiding officer, a steam car not a battery one. Thanks a lot, Shit. Thanks a lot, Howard. 
<clears throat> Next, we have 